Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. It's Caitlin Pingrazzi with Max Brook Realtors. I'm here today, super excited with Madeline King with Sherwin-Williams. She's the designer account executive for Sherwin-Williams in the local Detroit market. We met a few weeks ago when she was giving me this amazing designer kit that we'll talk about a little bit later for any of my clients that are looking to um, either buy a home or looking to put their house on the market. They would, walk, we could do a little paint consultation. There's all kinds of goodies within the designer kit that now I have some access to, which is awesome. So thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm really excited because I think paint is just, it's a big like undertaking for people who don't do it on a regular basis. Definitely, and it's definitely kind of its own thing. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. it's its own, it's its own beast in itself because you know how much money goes into just going buying the paint if you decide to do it by yourself or you decide to hire it out. It's a big decision. It is. Um, what are some ways that people can kind of test the waters, not by just having like a swatch? Like, is there ways to buy like a smaller piece or is there a way for them to get like maybe a larger swatch for them to put on the wall before they actually go that route? For sure. Um, so we do offer two by two samples in the store that are for free as well as the four by four and eight by 11 sheets offline. Um, typically we give access to designers to order them for free. So if your client is working with like a realtor, a designer, or a decorator, they have the ability to order them for you and have them sent directly to the client. Um, there's also ordering the actual color sample, which is a quart. So you can actually paint it on the wall or paint it on a piece of poster board. We do offer a small wall in stores as well. It has tape on the back. You can apply it to the wall as well. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely. So what are some big trends that you see coming to the market this year within the, the paint world? Definitely. So depending on what you're looking at is either a forecast or a report. Report is happening in the past, what we've been seeing happen, and then forecasting is trending, so it's up and coming. Um, Sherwin-Williams comes out with a color mix called Color Mix Forecast 2019, so we think this is trending for now and years to come. So we're going to see these colors kind of coming down the market way, either um, by furniture or automotive or fashion or graphics. That's really what's influencing the marketplace. Okay. So we may not see these right now in store, but if you're a designer, you go see these colors at High Point or Neocon, all these big upcoming events, and you kind of see the inspiration through paint, and we're just trying to captivate that. Um, this year we did based on personality, but we really do see a lot more warmer colors coming into it. Um, we had Shapeshifter, which was our um, take on space, ethereal, galaxy, kind of that oh, out fun. of the world. Um, and then we have Wander, which is where our 2019 color of the year, Cavern Clay, comes from. Ode to the Southwest, you know, Ralph Lauren's mm -hmm. been with us in the home industry for like 50 years, and so oh, wow. it's kind of a twist on that. And then we have Aficionado, which is our... Really regal. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Menswear, plaid, tweed, all that kind of fun, cozy wool mm -hmm. um, elements. And a little bit of ode to like the mid-century modern that we still see that in flux, especially around Royal Oak and Fernie. Yeah, all those people little are bungalows. loving that. And then we have our enthusiasts, which is our more is more. So, because we're getting a little tired oh, of like the Scandinavian. That. Yeah, like, for sure. Less is more. I'm like, no, more is more. Definitely. <laughs> Give a little busyness and personality into the room. Definitely. And there's no overarching theme. It's really whatever you want yeah. out of it. And then we have our naturalist, which is a little more obtainable, especially if you're selling a home. Mm -hmm. Something a little more tamed back. Um, you still have a, like a couple grays, but still a lot more warmer, natural look. And then we have our raconteur. So this is our... Beige. Okay. Beige is back. The B word is back. <laughs> but we see a little more of a red and kind of pink undertones, not that golden oak from the 1990s. Right, So it's right, a little right. more toned down. I feel so, like the mauve, this rosy pink is just yeah. like everywhere right now. It is. And blush is back. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So that's awesome. That's what we see for 2019. So, so we're here at my listing at 121 Maple in Royal Oak and my client uh, flipped this home for sale and we just coincidentally realized that all of the paint that he used in the home was actually Sherwin-Williams. So we picked out a couple of the colors that he utilized in the home. He um, went with one of the top three colors of last year, Yes, right? he did. So Repose Gray mm -hmm. was the color that he used on all of the walls within the home. Yep. He did a really fun door over here that he had uh, did some accents with, which is, let's see, Roykoff Pewter, Pewter. yep. Gorgeous, 
gorgeous tone that he did some double, um, what would you say, like an accent door? Definitely did a little detail and kind of accentuating the wood uh, trim in the actual door. Yeah. And it's nice because he actually thought of the home's integrity. So we do have a historical line that dictates which uh, colors were popular at that time frame. And he picked something from Arts and Crafts, which is totally characteristic to this home to and this, this neighborhood. Yeah, too. that's awesome. I wonder if he did that on purpose. I'm sure he did. But. You know, people are good like <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> or it just works out. Um, awesome. So uh, what are a few tips that you can give people about current lifestyles that they might have and what types of machines they should use for that? Like whether they need to wash their walls because they have kids or Definitely. what might be a little bit easier to have longer term, um, you know, hold within the house. Definitely. So at Sherman Williams, we do offer different uh, brands of paint, basically. Mm -hmm. um, we have our higher end, we have our mid grade, we have our low end too. That is still awesome for your budget. Um, Emerald is our top of the line. If I can pull it out. And this is a great paint if you do have kids, high traffic areas, or high humidity, anywhere that has a lot of moisture content. So in a bathroom mm -hmm. or in the basement, maybe. Exactly. Even in a flat finish, you have that durability with it. So if you've got kiddos or dogs running through, definitely uh, maybe going to a mat or a satin. Okay. So you have a little bit of sheen, so it's a little bit more fun, too. Um, that's been a great um, product. It's also zero VOC, so there's no smell in it either. Oh, wow. So if you're living in the home and painting, it makes the difference. Oh, absolutely. For sure. So you don't get that new paint smell? It's Not just kind of really. a clean... Okay. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, it's also tinted with zero VOC tint as well. So even if you go with a dark color, you're not smelling that off-gassing from the tint. Oh, too. okay. So cool. it's very cool. Um, another great one is our Harmony. So this is Harmony. It is my odor eating formaldehyde reducing paint and actually improves your indoor air quality for up to five years. Wow. So the more painted surface area you have of that, it'll help with the off-gassing um, from your carpet or from your built-ins, anything of that sort plus the paint too. Okay. So very cool. cool. Yeah. I mean, Sheens is just, I think on top of picking colors is just so complex to people. It can be. And I mean, a lot of people are going to maybe a Sherwin-Williams store, but a lot of times they're also going to like a Home Depot for sure. and they might not be getting the consultation that they need exactly. for a big project. I mean, if you're repainting a 2000 square foot house, you're spending thousands of dollars. So you, you really do need to do your homework on the front end to make sure that you're investing your money in the right place Correct. on the right place uh, on the right sheen because I actually just listed my home a couple weeks ago and we, were, we repainted the whole house nice. but we have a dog we have a kid that has mm -hmm. like you know his big baby car seat uh -huh. and there's nicks on the wall and we went to go try and wash some of it off and we just didn't do our due diligence on the front end to know which sure. finish to, to use so it we ran into a situation where we ended up having to repaint a lot of the rooms in our house which my husband says that paint goes bad so how long does paint last for once you open the can so typically if it's been tinted and it sits on the shelf, like in your basement, if it's been in a nice um, climate controlled area, it can last up to 10 years. You can just bring it in the store, we pound it down and reshake it up and you should be good to go. Oh, okay. Um, just well, he depends. was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just depends. It can go bad. When you open it up, it does have a smell to it right. too. So you kind of know right then and there. It has kind of like a rotten egg smell. Yeah, almost. absolutely. That's so. exactly why we thought it was probably bad. Yeah. And we didn't want to put it on the wall. Because you're painting the wall and you smell that in the house. And that's not you no, know, always not so fun. Good. But another thing we ran into when we were trying to paint these rooms is we didn't necessarily have those colors saved in the basement. Oh, so okay. we might have ran out of the paint or we just decided to dispose of it. So you have a really cool little tool that you use yeah. to know what kind of paint that you actually used in the home. And it's Definitely. not specific just to Sherwin-Williams. She, no, they yeah. might give you the most matched up color to that specific one that for sure because you could probably go and is, is it that you need a paint chip or something that you need to bring into the store to, correct okay so either a quarter size of the paint off the wall or whatever your color matching to typically you want a painted surface okay or um, a physical um, surface okay um, basically this guy has their calibration system built into it um, you hook it up to your app, which is connected by Bluetooth. So you just kind of connect. You hit the little button on top and it goes blue. And it says connected and then it'll calibrate as well. So it already has the little cap on there. So now it's calibrated. So basically you can take your cap off, put the little, um, Lens. screen, yeah. Yeah, the little lens, on the wall or any painted surface, you hit the scan button and 
it'll go and read that wall for you. So cool, such a cool, because a lot of people are buying homes and they yep. don't want to necessarily want to paint the entire room, but they need to paint maybe one little piece that was a little nicked up for, sure. for people who are selling their house. And so you don't have to go on this like wild goose chase or change your color and have Definitely. it not match. And you can do it in a little bit more of a simpler way that doesn't make you want to pull your hair out. Definitely. So. And if it wasn't a Sherwin-Williams color, it kind of breaks it down to um, a graphic indication. So from that, the stores can kind of pull into that and figure out which which brand and which sheen level it would be at too. Cool. So, Which kind of leads me to my next question. Yeah. So I've done... I've probably picked out, you know, 15 different paints for the home that I'm just leaving. <laughs> yeah. And every time it just feels like total chaos because okay. I just feel like I'm given this and then I'm trying to work through it and I have no idea how to work my way through this thing. So why don't, can you give us a few tips on sure. what's the easiest way to kind of like work through a color wheel and how it's organized? Definitely. So the color wheel, all of our colors are in one wheel now, which is great. So the you're not leaving any at home or at the store or whatnot, so you have them all right here. It's broken up by brightness, so you have your bright colors up front, you have your warm neutrals and cool neutrals in the middle, and then you have your whites and pastels, timeless, historic interior, exterior. So when you're breaking down what you're looking for in a color, um, this is what we call a color family, and then based on the strip, this is basically the undertones in the majority of the color you're looking at on the wall. So it has like more of a red, um, brown tone and when you bring it up the last color the last pigment you have in there it becomes a little more pink um, basically most of the deck kind of is broken up by warm tones and then it goes into cool tones okay so cool tones being your blue purple green and then your warm tones is your yellow red and orange okay um, so, so when you get into like a white or a gray family, like yeah. how do you know if it's more of like a bluish tint or there is any blue associated with it or maybe there's another color that's associated with it. So Definitely. when you finish painting it in your house, it looks the way that it's supposed to look that you thought originally. Definitely. Um, so again, it'll be at the base of the, any color. Okay. So you can kind of see there's some more brown tones underneath there. The ones that are truest to black will give you that scale mm -hmm. of no other undertones and okay. being a true gray at that point. So no other outside colors, it will probably, yeah, that's correct. Bad. So this that's one's helpful. pretty true. And then repose gray, which is the one that's painted in this space, is a pretty good indication of this is a pretty true gray scale. Okay. So you see the black box at the bottom and then it gets a little bit slightly lighter mm -hmm. and then you have repo grays at the top. Okay. Cool. So this is a pretty pretty good indication. So this is broken up just like the fan deck, which is a little bit easier for your clients to read. So everything's broken up um, by brightness up in the front. Wow. So that was your warm, this is your cool, and now this is your warm neutrals and your cool neutrals. So you can really see the undertones and how they're changing. Mm -hmm. So you really know what's gonna be playing in your space. Um, and for your grays and whites, they have their own section because they are difficult. Of course. They're, and your lighting will play into that as well. Absolutely. Because, I mean, you, that's the biggest, I think, hurdle with picking paints is how is it going to play in my specific space as opposed to on a two-by-two two card. Yeah. Definitely. So. so ordering those larger color chips or working with a designer mm -hmm. or a decorator or a realtor will really help elevate your design style and make your home easier to sell or just better to live in, too. Right. If you were going to choose, like, one accent color for a room or for a space, yeah. what would you choose right now? Ooh, that's tough. The navies have been really popular right now. I love um, Anchors Away. Okay. Another fun one that I have used in my past is Swanky Gray, which Ooh. is like a purple kind of sophisticated mm -hmm. um, gray that I've done in the past. I think I actually used that one in one of my rooms in the house. Because <laughs> like, I think <laughs> I like the, the name. Yeah. <laughs> So that leads me to another question. Okay. So how do you guys pick up these crazy names for these paints? Like, oh my gosh. Is it this room full of people that just kind of like decide to talk about like maybe their aunt's name is that and then they just want to go with that or how does this well, work? We do have a color committee and that's how they come up with the forecast. Um, Sue Wadden, who's our color, uh, color director of marketing basically, mm -hmm. she did the new 9000 series and she got to pick out whichever color name that was going in between those other existing colors. Basically it's anything that's not copyrighted or in use already, um, making sure that it's not trademarked, 
But yes, one of the colors, Lauren's surprise, is actually named after her neighbor. It was her neighbor, Lauren, and she just thought this is kind of what she would pick out. <laughs> That's so awesome. that became Lauren's surprise. Well, there you go. It's, <laughs> the myth has been debunked. There's actually people behind this. They pick the colors, they hang out in a room, and they probably vote on it and make sure it's all good yeah, to go. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. This yeah, is no problem. A plethora of information for you to take home. Make sure you do consult with a designer or a realtor when you're making the move to painting your house, especially if you're doing an entire house painting. Because the thing you want the house, the the rooms in the house to have their own kind of character, but Definitely. you also need some type of flow. So you don't want to be too bold, almost to the point where nothing flows together, right? Yeah. You need it to kind of carry on to the next room and be like this ever telling story with the paint. For sure, and especially if you're reselling a home that person's going to put their personality in this space when they buy it. Right. So it's nice to have a blank canvas, very, um, you know, muted, and, and, muted like, yeah. and enhancing the features that are already in place of the, of the space too. Right. Because if you can eliminate that cost for the future buyers by picking something a little more basic or more on trend, mm -hmm. then that allows them to think, oh, I'm going to be saving a few thousand dollars because I don't have to paint. I don't have to hire a painter and I don't have to go down that route. And maybe my stuff will fit in here because I have gray couches and yeah. the walls are gray and we can just play into some other colors because sure. finding a painter and, you know, finding paint that works for you sometimes isn't everybody's favorite thing to do. Yeah. And you so. may not have the time or if you're working out of state or overseas, you really don't have that kind of capability to you know, visualize it. Home. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, you have the lighting, the finishes and what you're working with and what you're bringing in and the space. It's honestly best to take a professional's opinion at that point. For sure. So how so. can the average home buyer or home seller have access to your paint? Is it the best to go to the stores? For sure. We have over 56 stores in Detroit alone. Um, we're very helpful with the regular homeowner and we do have designers that we contact um, and painters that we can recommend as well. So basically we want to help the homeowner make the right decision in the end. Mm -hmm. So do you guys do any type of in-home consultation or? We do. Um, Sherwin-Williams in most metro markets we do have an in-home color consultation program. Um, it's one gal that will do a couple of the stores in mm -hmm. that area okay. and you can purchase that through the store as well. Okay. So Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for You're joining welcome. us. No problem. Thanks for um, watching the video on all things paint and uh, let us know if you have any questions.